right here in the United States, more than 100,000 residents were exposed to lead-tainted water for months, some for years. And when the news finally broke in 2016, the nation was shocked. If you're anything like me, you felt a lot of different emotions when you heard about Flint. Shock, disbelief, maybe even anger. I remember personally feeling upset and really disturbed. Like, how could this be happening to American citizens? I mean, don't we have the best water in the world? So I wanted to dig past the headlines and do something. I wanted to help, like many people did. So I actually volunteered with a water filter company. Now, I'm a data scientist and a graduate of Harvard University, so naturally my first task was research. I really wanted to understand water's impact on public health in the United States and put Flint into some type of historical context. So I went back to Harvard to pull data and pull data from sources like the EPA and other research institutions. What I discovered was really shocking. There are actually 3,000 locations in the United States with more lead in their water than Flint, Michigan. 3,000. Now, the EPA will tell you there is no such thing as a safe amount of lead in drinking water. The World Health Organization will tell you that the health effects from lead poisoning are irreversible. But yet there are millions of Americans being exposed to dangerous levels of lead in their water every single day. Now, most of the time, lead is caused by problems with our crumbling infrastructure. Corroding pipes are really dangerous. But there's another source of contamination that we have to be concerned about, and that's industrial pollution. So that's what happens when chemicals and toxins, they come out of the back end of a manufacturing process and they end up back in our local water supplies. So right here in the United States, there are 1.2 trillion gallons of toxic chemicals that are produced and dumped into our local water supplies every single year. This is not a third world issue. Here in the US, there are actually 12 million cases of waterborne disease every single year in the US. So it makes you wonder, the water that you drink, that you cook with, that you bathe your children with, you can just take it for granted anymore. So there are chemicals in the water, things like chromium-6, trichloroethane, perfluorooctanoic acid, say that three times fast. And these big chemical names probably don't mean much to you, so I'm gonna to talk to you from a more human level. I'm gonna tell you stories. I'm gonna introduce you to a couple of people. And once you hear their stories, I've changed their names to protect their privacy, but their stories are very real. Once you hear their stories, you'll understand why you can no longer take your water for granted. So let me introduce you to Bobby. Bobby was three years old when his mother began to insist that the city of Flint test the water at their home because it had started to change colors, the family's hair had started to fall out. So when they got the test results back, they discovered that there were 800 times more lead in that water than the federally regulated limit. That's two times more than what would be considered toxic waste. By this time, the doctors had confirmed that Bobby's growth had been stunted because of the lead exposure. And they moved away from Flint, but to this day, Bobby is still significantly almost half the size of his twin brother, who experienced a whole different set of health problems. But everybody was shocked. We all saw the headlines. And last year, somebody made a movie about it. Let me introduce you to Jennifer. Jennifer is 33 years old. She has four children, and she has lupus. Jennifer's house sits almost directly on top of an underground plume. This is a traveling mass of water underneath the ground that's contaminated with chromium-6. Now, if that sounds familiar to you, chromium-6 is the same chemical that was made famous in the movie Aaron Brockovich almost 18 years ago. Julia Roberts won an Oscar telling the story about water causing cancer in the California town of Hinckley. That's where Jennifer lives. Now, her family cannot afford to move, but despite global headlines, $333 million that the local industry was forced to pay, and all of this attention, 18 years later, that local water supply is still contaminated. 
but because it's just below federal limits, they're not required to do much more about it. And yet, they already made a movie about that. Someone will probably make a sequel. Let me introduce you to Hannah. Hannah's dad is a Marine Corps officer. So they lived on Camp Lejeune, that's a Marine Corps base in North Carolina. Hannah was born there. She lived her whole life there. And she passed away at the age of nine from leukemia. As it turns out, over 900,000 servicemen and their families who lived on that base from 1955 to 1987 were exposed to contamination from the water supply on the Marine Corps base. The government recently released a report that connected thousands of cases of diseases and deaths to the local water supply. Amazing, horrifying things. Cancer, the bladder, brain, breast, cervix, colon, lymphoma, leukemia, Hodgkin's disease, and the list goes on. You probably didn't know that water could do such scary things. Hannah's family certainly didn't know. But somebody heard the story, and they made a movie about it. Now, you may be thinking, well, I'm really glad I don't live in Flint, Michigan, or Hinkley, California, or near an army base. But as it turns out, this is a problem facing all Americans. Let me give you a fun fact. The assistant secretary of state actually testified before the Department of Defense last year. And he said they've identified 400 army bases, and military bases, with that same chemical that took Hannah's life, contaminating not just the base, but water supplies of people who don't live on the base. The same chemical that was found in Hinkley, California, in the movie, Aaron Brockovich, and about 150 other emerging contaminants have been found in water systems across all 50 states. There is another 80,000 chemicals that are approved to be used in industrial processes, and none of these are regulated by the EPA. This affects everyone in this room, every American, every major city, and it causes us to ask the question, do we really know what's in our water? Do we know what we're being exposed to? A lot of the problems, if they're not coming from industrial pollutants, they are coming from infrastructure. But guess what? Our infrastructure is 100 years old in this country. It's received a D rating from the American Society of Civil Engineers, and the price tag to fix it over the next 15 years would be about $1 trillion. Now, this is money that local governments, I promise you, they do not have. So if they're not going to do anything about it, that means we need to make a change to protect our own health. Because there's a big gap between EPA regulations and known health recommendations. In fact, I've been standing here talking to you about the great American water crisis, but we're actually facing the great global water crisis. Fortune magazine said, water is to the 21st century what oil was to the 20th century. That means that the next wars and con conflicts that we face globally, many of them will be fought over water. And as we all know, when there's a fight over resources, people of color, minorities, and underserved communities suffer the most. So yes, I'm a data scientist. I'm a graduate of Harvard University. I received a fellowship from NASA for my work in water quality data and research. But I'm also a human being, and I'm a visionary who had the audacity to believe that I could create a solution to help solve the grand global challenge of water. I envision a world where a consumer can know what's in their water before they get sick, so they can do something about it. I imagine a world where consumers, where corporations, or even governments could have access to real-time water quality data so they could predict and prevent a public health crisis. And so, I created a company to do just that, and it's called Aquagenuity. We use data to produce technology-driven solutions for the water crisis. The way it works is something simple. It's a simple tool that's revolutionary I invented. It's called the water score. So the same way that you check your weather forecast, the same way you check your oil in your car so you don't tear it up, the same way you check your credit score, now you can check your water score. 
What this means is a consumer, if you want to know what's in your water so you can take action, well, now there's an app for that. I've assembled a team of the smartest people I know, data scientists, developers, PhDs, policy professionals, and ex experts. And we've come together to create solutions that are driven by big data, artificial intelligence, and predictive analytics. So we're creating a world where a consumer, they're looking for a new home, they can search by traffic, crime, schools. Well, now, for the first time, you can search by water quality. We're envisioning and creating a world where a consumer is judged not just by their stock price, but by their water score. We're creating a world where a smart city is able to see real-time water quality data so they can take action before another crisis. That's why our hashtag is prevent another Flint. And because this is a global problem, we've been selected by Coca-Cola to work with some of the biggest companies in the world to help change the way consumers, corporations, and smart cities interact with their water. But if you don't remember anything else that I shared with you today, I want you to remember Bobby. Remember Jennifer. Remember Hannah. And remember Bernard, my father. A few years ago, he moved to a new house in a small town. Now, after 72 years of relative health, he was suddenly diagnosed with diabetes. Now, his lifestyle had not changed. His diet definitely had not changed. In fact, the only thing that had changed was his zip code. Now, during all of my research, I came across an obscure report linking arsenic and local water supplies to diabetes. But by this time, his health had taken a turn for the worst. My father actually passed away from kidney complications last summer. Now, how many of us are being exposed to health risks because of our water that could actually shorten our life? You don't have to take that risk anymore. There's simple steps that you can take. Number one, check your water score. I hope I've proven the case that you can no longer just take your water for granted or leave it up to the government. So take the time to check and find out what's in your water, where you live. Number two, find out what that means for your health. So when I share with you that arsenic in local water supplies has been linked to diabetes, to cancer, that aluminum in water supplies has been linked to Alzheimer's. It causes you to take action. And number three, find out what type of water filter you need. Yes, you need a water filter. And no, they're not all the same. So the water where you live is not the same as the water where I live. There are geospecific contaminants in water that's different based on your zip code and other geographic factors. So find out which filters are certified to remove the contaminants where you live. Don't wait until yourself or a loved one gets sick or worse because of exposure to contaminated water. Don't wait until they make a movie about your hometown. Check your water score. Encourage your friends and your family to do the same. Spread the word. Help me to spread the word so that every consumer and smart city can safely answer the question, what's in your water? Thank you.